Hey, Michael Godwin here from The Benefit Company. Uh, we recently posted a video on the concept of an ICRA, uh, which is an individual coverage health reimbursement arrangement. That's simply a tax advantage funding vehicle for employers to help employees purchase individual health insurance. So today we're gonna dig a little bit deeper into some scenarios and situations where employers might consider an ICRA. Um, let me just say as a matter of backdrop, this video is really gonna focus on what we call the mid-market. So at The Benefit Company, we really focus on helping those employers with 100 to 2,000 employees. So we're gonna be looking at ICRA kind of through that lens today. Um, so that said, typically what we see with ICRAs is that they are not necessarily put in place uh, as a full replacement for a traditional group plan, but more often it's, it's, it, uh, it can be used as uh, a complement to a traditional group plan for a certain segment or class of employees. Now, let's look at some scenarios or situations that are common in the market where uh, it might drive an employer to consider an ICRA. So number one, low participation. If you've just got habitual year after year low participation amongst a certain population in your healthcare plan that's affecting the rates and the renewals for the overall plan, you might consider an ICRA. Um, also network issues. So let's just say you're a, you know, a company that has employees spread out throughout the country and you've got one carrier network in place for the entire population. You may have a segment of your population that's negatively impacted by that and has some challenges in their particular area. Uh, seasonal part-time hourly employees, if you're in an industry where uh, that is the norm, where you're going to have a large segment of the population in those areas, uh, and ICRA is a great place to look for those folks. Um, and similarly, if you're in an industry where there historically has been very high turnover in a, in a short, in short tenure for a certain segment of population. And again, I know for a lot of industries they're facing that today, comment here really is more for those industries where historically that's been the norm. Um, now, so speaking of industries, let's look at some industries where uh, a NICRA may make the most sense to take a look. Um, some of these are going to uh, sort of be obvious, but you think about retail, um, hospitality, country clubs, resorts, etc., restaurant groups, landscaping companies where you have a large population of seasonal and hourly folks, manufacturing space and construction, both of those industries you may typically see a large population of traditional office employees plus uh, a large population of uh, um, hourly type folks as well, so you got kind of competing needs there. Same dynamic can exist in the healthcare space as well with part-time folks, nurses, etc. So let me uh, talk through a couple quick scenarios that are more specific here. So I mentioned the landscaping company. So again, commonly what we see in that world is that um, you've got a large population of these seasonal and hourly folks uh, from a compensation and benefit standpoint, uh, perhaps they can't afford um, the traditional medical plan that's offered to everyone, and so hence you've got low participation, or you've got you know folks that are buying the plan and then they're coming off of, of the plan and it creates some administrative headaches for the employer. So an ICR can make some sense to carve those folks out from the traditional group plan um, on a class basis, just offer them the ICRA. It's gonna give them some lower cost options, give them more options to, to create a plan that meets their particular needs, um, and then sort of shield the traditional group plan from any participation issues that might have historically negatively affected the plan. So that's an opportunity. Um, the other one um, is related to these network issues that I mentioned earlier. So let's just say you're a company based in California, perhaps in the manufacturing space. Um, Kaiser is huge in California, so let's say you made the decision to put a Kaiser plan in place for all your employees. Well, you may have some folks in Georgia, for instance, say at a manufacturing or warehouse facility, um, hourly, primarily hourly folks, and Kaiser may not make the most sense for them. Uh, and so you could look at putting an ICRA play, plan in place for that segment of the population, for that class of employee, uh, to give them, again, more options to choose a network um, and a plan and premiums that fit their needs better. So those are a couple scenarios to consider. Uh, obviously lots of what ifs uh, in this world. If you have specific questions, want to talk through any scenarios for you, let us know. Uh, we're gonna wrap up this series uh, with our next video, uh, which will focus on some administrative and compliance considerations that employers um, will look at in the event that they do want to put an ICRA in place. Thanks for watching, have a great day.